Welcome to page 16 of my annotation series, Oscar nominated, Emmy approved. The doctor thinks you just got too tired and hot after your long trip. Grandpa relaxed in between sips of soup. Ooh, alliteration. Between sips of soup, he told us of his journey. Hmm, a little musical there. Soon after we visited him, Grandpa decided that he would like to see where his only descendants lived and what our home was like. This notion of only living descendants, right? Remember when we read about how there's only a hundred and, oh, now I'm forgetting the number, but something like 170,000 left and that only like one fifth live on reservations, right? Well, this idea that this culture has been eradicated, um, if you know a little bit about uh, American history, that, that makes sense, right? This is uh, a culture that uh, Europeans came over, we came over and, and destroyed. And um, this story is reckoning with that in its own small way. Lived and what our home was like. Besides, he admitted sheepishly, he was lonesome after we left. I knew that everybody felt as guilty as I did. So how are we gonna resolve this guilt? Hmm? How are you gonna fix that guilt by the end of the story? Not that the author has to, but uh, usually in middle school, uh, stories won't be that um, ambiguous. Especially mom. Mom was all grandpa had left. So even after she married my dad, who's not an Indian. So she married into the, the TV Indian part of culture sort of like, or the part that would perceive her culture in a way that might not be the way that it is, right? And after Cheryl and I were born, mom made sure that every summer we spent a week with grandpa. Never thought grandpa would be lonely after our visits and none of us noticed how old and weak had, he had become. None of you noticed? None of us noticed? Guilty indeed. How old and weak he'd become. Grandpa knew, so he came to us. He had ridden on buses for two and a half days, and when he arrived in the city, tired and stiff from sitting for so long, he set out walking to find us. He stopped to rest on the steps of some building downtown, and a policeman found him. The officer took Grandpa to the city bus stop, waited until the bus came, and then told the driver to let Grandpa out at Bellevue Drive. After Grandpa got off the bus, he started walking again, but he couldn't see the house numbers on the other side when he walked on the sidewalk, so he walked in the middle of the street. And this um, walking in the middle of the street is another moment of cultural tension. Right? Some of us rightly say, why would you walk in the middle of the street? That's a good way to get hit or hurt. But he's just saying, I need to find this house and might be unused to the busy patterns of uh, suburban life that Martin's family enjoys. That's when all the little kids and dogs followed him. I knew everybody felt as bad as I did. There's, there's repeating the same thing, right? So lots of guilt. Yet, I was so proud of the 86-year-old man who had never been away from the reservation, but who had the courage to travel so far alone. You found the money in my boots, he asked Mom. Martin did, she answered, then scolded. Grandpa, you shouldn't have carried so much money. What if someone had stolen it from you? Grandpa laughed. I would have known if anyone tried to take the boots off my feet. The money is what I've saved for a long time, a hundred dollars for my funeral. But you take it now to buy groceries so that I won't be a burden to you while I'm here. That won't be necessary, Grandpa, Dad said. We are honored to have you with us and you will never be a burden, right? Uh, so this speaks that maybe the reservation is a somewhat uh, poor place. Right? There might not be a lot of job opportunities there, for instance. Um, that won't be necessary, Grandpa. Grandpa was pleased. I'm only sorry that we never thought to bring you home with us this summer and spare you the discomfort of a long trip. Grandpa was pleased. Thank you, he answered. But don't feel bad that you didn't bring me with you, for I would not have come then. It was not time. This is somewhat mystical. He said this in such a way that no one could argue with him. So coming from that mysticism, coming from that uh, religious tone equals uh, authority, 
I'm not going to argue with the authority here. And Grandpa just took that authority in the way that he said, it was not time. To Grandpa in the Lakota, he once told me a thing that would be done when it was the right time to do it, and that's the way it was. Well, this unquestioning assertion about reality and the way things are or were, right? Um, that's that religious authority right there. And that was page 16, 16, baby.